it is indeed uh, an honor and a privilege for me to come here today to attend the first official function of mine in Atlanta. And what a better occasion and what a better day than the birthday celebration of Mahatma Gandhi. So thank you very much uh, for your presence and thank you Gandhi Foundation and all its associates who have uh, organized this uh, wonderful function. I was very impressed with uh, all the speeches, all the speakers who spoke before me, especially the community leaders and the bhajans which were sung with such devotion. Uh, today, 2nd of October, is not only a birthday celebration of Mahatma Gandhi, but it has been declared by the United Nations as the day, International Day of Peace and Nonviolence, which was a unanimous resolution passed by the United Nations, which was moved on behalf of India. And uh, I come here today, though I am not formally accredited as, as yet, that the Chief of Protocol will announce later my official capacity as Council General of India. But I come here today as a humble citizen of India to pay the tribute and homage to the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Ladies and gentlemen, Mahatma Gandhi's human philosophy and inherent spirituality had a profound influence not only in the people of India, but also on the freedom-loving people worldwide. And the fact that we are today in the King Center is a testimony to this fact. Uh, Mr. Razdan mentioned about my years in Durban, South Africa, which I will definitely mention, but I would like to just recall Mahatma Gandhi's days in Africa. And these were quite formative years. This was, in fact, uh, he spent 20 years there. In fact, he founded the first political organization of Africa called Natal Indian Congress in 1895. He founded also one of the first newspapers of Africa called Indian Opinion. And in 1893, a young barrister, as Mahatma Gandhi was then, was evicted from a train at a place called Peter Maritzburg for being a non-white. That day a colonial man fell and a Mahatma rose. Gandhi then vowed to, fought, to fight against racial discrimination, colonialism and injustice. And by a strange coincidence, on September 11, 1906, Gandhi launched his first Satyagraha movement in Johannesburg. I say this because when I was in Durban, South Africa, the approximate place where Mahatma Gandhi was evicted out of the train in Peter Maritzburg, along with the mayor of Peter Maritzburg, Mr. Mondi, I remember his name, and with the granddaughter of Mahatma, Hila Van, we went and I laid a plaque on the station that this is the place where Mahatma Gandhi was thrown out of the, of the train and then he rose and took the vow that he'll fight against racial discrimination and injustice and, of course, colonialism. When Mahatma Gandhi did his, you know, used uh, South Africa as a laboratory where he did a lot of his experiments with truth, including Satyagraha movement, and after that, trying his experiments, he came to India in 1916 to lead the uh, Satyagraha movement, the non-violent struggle. When he brought his major contribution of uh, Mahatma Gandhi was to bring the masses into the India's freedom movement, and that enabled India to lead to the path of freedom. This had a profound effect not only uh, in the developing world, but all several colonies in Asia, Africa and Latin America. With the result, the colonial yoke was thrown and the mighty British Empire was brought down to its knee. About the personal experience also in, uh, I would like to mention in Durban, South Africa, Mahatma Gandhi during his stay in South Africa had founded one Phoenix ashram where he experimented with his lot of what he preached. And this uh, Phoenix ashram, unfortunately, was destroyed uh, in 1980s in the apartheid violence. But like a proverbial bird phoenix, it rose from the ashes and it has again been resurrected with the help of South African and Indian government. And then 
President of uh, Af South Africa, President Ambeki, inaugurated this new Phoenix Ashram. So uh, we have tried our best to ensure that Mahatma's message is also present in Africa and South Africa. In fact, I also remember that in one of the places, uh, it's called Newcastle in South Africa, where Mahatma Gandhi started one of his first movement uh, against uh, uh, the labor laws in South Africa. There, at that place, I remember as Council General in uh, Durban, I went there and presented them a bust of Mahatma Gandhi, similar kind of a bronze bust, where it was to show that here was Gandhiji started one of his first movements. I would just like to mention uh, some of the general points which most of you are familiar but let me say that Mahatma awakened the global conscious about some of the great evils besetting our species, among them ethnocentrism, xenophobia, colonialism and violence. He gave the talisman that if ever you were in doubt, please recall the face of the poorest man. And uh, I've seen here what he, uh, what he has uh, had its effect in so many important personalities in the world, Dr. Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Mandela Desmond Tutu and so many others and it was Dr. Martin Luther King who once said that Christ gave us goals, Mahatma gave us the tactics and of course uh, Dr. King's message is also at the uh, below this statue where he mentions about Mahatma Gandhi's, Gandhi's work for humanity and his, uh, uh, and his message of peace and love and violence. I would also like to mention here that Mahatma Gandhi also had a multifaceted personality, including a sense of humor. Once reacting to criticism that he was wearing mainly his usual loincloth, sandals and shawl when he was invited to tea by King George and Queen Mary of England, he said, the king had enough on for both of us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now let me uh, point to you that Mahatma Gandhi bequeathed to us three main uh, guiding principles and his three main principles was the trinity of ahimsa that is non-violence, satyagra or the force born of truth and non-violence and sarvodaya or upliftment of all. It is the value of these principles that we have to rediscover if you want to deal effectively with today's challenges. Therefore the essence of Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy Political philosophy was the empowerment of every individual, irrespective of class, caste, color, creed or community. To him, extreme poverty was itself a form of violence. When India drew up its constitution, where my own father was a member of the Constituent Assembly, concepts such as fundamental rights, directive principles and other basic principles of the state's abolition of untouchability, rights under privilege, and marginalized were all inspired by Gandhian thoughts and values. Even in India's foreign policy, which was based on Panchal philosophy propounded by Pandit Nehru, was itself drawn upon Gandhian philosophy of peace and non-violence. Another institution which has evolved in India today on the basis of Gandhian philosophy is the Panchayati Raj where the village council or the village parliament will assume more responsibility. I would like to mention here that today India is the world's largest democracy the democratic institutions inspired by Mahatma Gandhi have stood the test of time. Today, India is also prospering in the sense that it is the fourth largest economy based on purchasing power parity. And our rate of growth have been impressive in today's world where the recession is coming. While India has taken many miles uh, and many strides uh, on road to development, it has many miles to go as yet. And it is the effort of government of India to empower the common man and to make the growth more inclusive based on the Gandhian philosophy of elimination of poverty and empowerment of the masses. One other point I would like to mention here, which to show how Mahatma Gandhi was much ahead of his time, when Mahatma Gandhi had once stated that the earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need, but not every man's greed. In this simple statement on sustainable development, Mahatma Gandhi showed us the high value of, uh, value of high thinking and simple living. The concern for our environment and climate change that now envelops our civil society across the globe is best articulated by this 
sim simple statement. Therefore, Mahatma Gandhi raised the issues of environment much before his time. Another uh, great idea of Mahatma Gandhi, which is of relevance today, is the concept of equality, an idea that can foster peace between people, cultures, nations, and civilization, and is captured by Mahatma Gandhi's statement, and I quote, I do not want to stay in a house with all its windows and doors shut. I want a house with all its windows and doors open, where the cultural breezes of all lands and nations blow through my house, but I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. Unquote. This pluralism, this liberalism, this commitment to an open society and an open polity uh, is what shaped our national movement under Gandhiji's leadership. These wise words must guide us in this era of globalization that is the need for confluence of civilization by process of dialogue. I think that our pluralism is our biggest and most enduring tribute to our father of our nation. As long as the idea of India lives, in our hearts and minds, the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi will live on. This idea of India is the idea of unity and diversity. The idea of pluralism, the idea that there is need to be no conflict or civilization, the idea that is possible for us to facilitate and work for a confluence of civilization, these ideas I submit, ladies and gentlemen, have a universal and a truly global re relevance. In our history, I think, First time since Buddha, Gandhi was the greatest moral force in Indian politics. His, low, his whole life was an experiment with truth, and Mahatma Gandhi once said, in fact, that my life is my message. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we have completed the first decade of the 21st century, when we are conf confronted with increasing violence, religious fundamentalism, and terrorism, for the civilization to progress, the premises of Gandhi Ji have immediate relevance. As Nelson Mandela once said, Gandhian philosophy may be the key to human survival in the 21st century. Therefore, it is not the relevance of Mahatma Gandhi that is in question today. It is whether we have the courage to emulate his teachings and what he lived and died for. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.